Hi everyone, it's a new year, another academic video, and this one is about marking strategies. If you're new and you've just joined, welcome to our little university challenge, challenge our university channel space here on YouTube. Uh, my name is Caroline. I am a lecturer in physics at a UK university. Whilst I would love to be, you know, pursuing my own research and, you know, sorting out stuff with my PhD students all the time, actually January is a really heavy marking month for me. Um, I don't know about you, what you're walking back into, but because I was involved in teaching a couple of modules in the run up to the winter break, of course, now there's examinations and reports to be marked. And so this January, I will have my undergraduate first year examination answer scripts to mark. So that will be what, about 80 to 110 exam booklet answers coming my way requiring marking. I will have some master's laboratory reports to mark um, and typically those reports will be, I don't know, about 10 to 11 pages long in length and they will be master's students, you know, um, writing about an experiment they performed uh, earlier in the year, so earlier last year, later last year in November and December. And also I will have a few master's dissertations to mark, which are something different. And they are students who've been out on placement for a whole year in either a company or academic um, host institution. And they're writing up a kind of dissertation on their year long experience. Basically, I get an awful lot of marking landing on me in January. Um, and what I really obviously want to be doing is looking at my research and doing kind of all the exciting topics and investigative work on my personal area of specialism in physics. But as a good academic, I must tackle the marking. So in this video, I thought I would share my strategies for dealing with the marking and how I approach the different types of marking that I'm required to do. First up then is the exam scripts. So my undergraduate first year students, I've taught them a module all of last semester. So for 11 weeks, I guess from October through to December. Um, I actually co-teach that module with a lovely professor academic in the department. And they're sitting their exam paper in the current exam season, which means that I, at some point, I'm gonna get a whole load of exam scripts coming my way in early January. So I arm myself typically with a big mug of tea <laughs> and quite often some leftover kind of festive chocolates or biscuits if I'm feeling healthy, some fruit. And I do the marking in batches. And there are various tactics that different people use when they come to do their exam marking. I think I made a previous video on it, so I will try to find that video and include a link. But essentially your choice as the academic is do you want to mark the entire paper for one student and then mark the entire paper for the next student and so forth? Or do you want to mark one particular question for all the students and then mark the next question for all the students? Um, I tend to favour the latter approach. So I will pick a question and I will mark that question for all the students in one go and then I will move on and pick the next question and do all the students again in one go. Um, I'm very much in a kind of numerical, analytical discipline, so I'm not necessarily marking long essays. I'm typically marking, you know, mathematical style examination questions. And personally, I find it easier to hold in my head the answer for one question and to mark everybody than trying to hold or go through the answers for all the different questions for one student and then the next student and the next student. And being an examination, there's a whole set of university procedures that we have to follow. Again, I've done a video on that. <laughs> I'll try to find the link for that one too. Um, but essentially it just means that that paper's been through a process. So, you know, it's been moderated, it's been reviewed by an external examiner, um, it's been reviewed and moderated by an internal person within the department. And as part of that process, there's been an approved marking rubric that's gone alongside that exam paper. So actually, when it comes to marking it as the examiner, you then do have a very clear set of answers and associated marks that you can then use as you're going through doing your marking. So yeah, it doesn't, it's not a, necessarily a, a hard thing to do. 
It is a long thing to do though. You know, when I'm talking about having that number of examination scripts, you may have more. You know, I've got colleagues who are on courses like 200, 250 people on them. I've got colleagues on, on modules with only say 40 people on them. So how many exam scripts you get can widely, widely, widely vary um, depending on which course and which module you're, you're teaching. Um, but I do limit myself to only mark it, marking a certain number in one go. Um, I think that's really important for me because then I've got a goal, <laughs> an end point that I'm trying to get to. And it also helps keep me fresh. I, um, I don't get fatigued then when I'm marking, hopefully. And I think it makes them obviously fair and sharp when I do my marking that I'm in a good headspace and a good mindset to do that particular piece of work. So that's how I'll be tackling my exam script marking. laboratory script marking is slightly different. So in that case each student will turn in a laboratory report based on an experiment they've performed before you know before we break for the winter break and those reports can be you know 10 to 11 pages long in length. Um, so it's quite a lot of reading and I have to make sure that there's the different sections are present in that report. You know, as a scientific report, there's certain details that I'm looking for. Um, as a fellow scientist, would I be able to reproduce that work, understand that work? Is there enough information in that report for me to be able to understand exactly what the person did when they were conducting their experiment? Has the data been well analysed? You know, and actually, if the data doesn't go as intended. So quite often for these experiments, students are measuring a variable or measuring something where we actually do know what we're anticipating that variable to be, either through theory or because we can look it up to see other people's published results. And so sometimes obviously students are going to get a really close value and they can say their results are in really good agreement. And sometimes something happened in the experiment and the results won't be in such good agreement with those published values. Um, and I'm looking in those cases to see, OK, well, has it been explained as to why? You know, if, if it's not in good agreement, is there some physics underlying justification or something that happened in the experiment that would help understand why you got that discrepancy? So it's a very different style of marking to the exam script marking. Um, and again, I do them in small batches. Um, these are fairly long reports. So, you know, as I said, 10 or 11 pages each. I find that I can probably mark three in one go and then I take a break. Um, and the way I do it for the, the lab book marking is I have all the students listed out that I'm going to be doing their marking for. I have all the different criteria that I'm marking against. There's you know, different sections that I'm looking for that get awarded different marks. And then as I go student by student, I fill in the marks allocated for different sections to that particular student. And that allows me to then also look across all the cohort and cross compare and correlate my marks to say, OK, was I being consistent within that section? Was I ensuring that I was you know, applying the same principles to all the different students? And it just ensures that I'm doing good marking practices. So that's how I'll be tackling my MSc or my master's laboratory report marking. And alongside my exam scripts and my laboratory report marking, I will also have these master's dissertation reports to mark. Um, and again, they are different. They are much longer typically. Um, I think from memory, this cohort set goes up to about 40 to 60 pages, I think, from memory, if I'm remembering right. Maybe it's around the 40 page mark. <laughs> I'm sure I'll remember when I start looking at them again. Um, but essentially, again, this is a different style of marking because it's a student reflecting on a whole year's worth of placement work leading to a standalone dissertation. Um, and really, when I'm marking these reports, I am marking them one at a time. So I, I would mark one and then I will take a break and then I will mark another one and then I will take a break. And as an academic, I typically mark a much smaller number of those reports um, because there's a smaller number of students who are doing that particular course and on that particular module. Um, and apart from that, you know, it's quite a similar tactic then to how I mark the lab reports is that I'll be looking through different sections. I'll be looking to see how the work progressed throughout the research year and looking at the individual criteria and whether those have been met. Um, and if you're interested in the criteria and actually how we do have different 
bits that we assess within um, a kind of report or a dissertation, let me know because that's quite an involved, I think, and quite a separate video to this kind of more overview one of marking strategies. Personally, as the academic doing the marking, um, it's very tempting to get the marking over and done with as quickly as possible. Uh, it's something I would like to clear off my desk, you know, as soon as I possibly can, so I can move back on to both my own research and to getting ready for this semester's upcoming modules. But the reality is that marking takes time and I'm becoming, I think, better the more I do this at spacing it out. You know, I am getting stricter with myself saying if I've marked that many, whatever it is, reports or exam scripts per day, that I can stop and that will be enough for that day and I will do some more the next day. Um, so yeah, as tempting as it is to try to clear the whole lot quickly in one go, and I'm sure I've got academic colleagues that do do that. They just power through the whole list and get them all out off their table. Um, I just tend to set myself small achievable goals because that way I can keep ticking over with other activities at the same time. You know, I have then got a bit of time to talk to my PhD students. I've got a bit of time to get my modules starting to get ready for next semester. I've got a bit of time to review papers, write papers, chase grants. You know, it, it gives me more, I think, of a balance as I go through when I have that heavy marking period in my diary. Um, but let me know, how do you cope when you have lots of marking coming your way? Because, you know, it's one of those things as an academic that if you are wanting to be a lecturer or a professor or you are a lecturer already, um, typically if you're on the teaching and the research combined track, which most lecturers in the UK are, you're going to get marking. And quite often you get periods where you have loads of marking, then very, very little marking, and then loads of marking, and then very, very little marking. It seems to come in like crests and troughs, um, at least my own marking load does at any rate. So um, let me know how much marking do you have to face and how do you tackle it? All in one go or bit by bit? It's quite satisfying when you get to the end of marking. It is quite a nice feeling. Anyway. Have a lovely week and I will see you next Monday for a different academic video and I'm going to try to mix these up so next week we'll be on a completely different topic and probably not something at all teaching related. So I'll see you next Monday for that video. Bye!